Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and I was asked to explain how to use the scissor tool inside of XCS. To make sure we're all on the same page, it's June of 2025 and I'm using version 2.6.38. If your version is lower than that, you can update. If your version is higher than that, listen for the commands as the locations of everything might have changed around in the interface. So here's what we're going to be talking about. My number one rule for the scissor tool, how to use it, and three ways we actually use it in real life. Here's my number one rule for the scissor tool. Don't use this tool a lot. If you have vector editing, you can do a lot that will actually close paths correctly using these four commands or a combination of those Boolean uh, algorithms to help you. I'm gonna tell you what the scissor tool is and where we can use it, specifically a vector versus an image. We all know that the top two are images, JPEGs and PNG. We know that because over here we only have the option for engrave. In our layers panel, it, the object list only shows it as an image and we are seeing the actual image editing menu. And that's the same for JPEGs and PNGs. Both of those are all the same. However, when we do vectors, this is just a circle drawn by hitting C on my keyboard. So here's another one. This is just text and this is live text. We know it's live text because we can click in. We can also see that the text name and text functionality is here. When we weld it, we still only have the text menu and that is because we can still double click and edit. However, when we convert it to a path with a right click, this is going to convert it. Now the difference in menus is these two down here have this little spaceship. And yeah, I think it looks like a spaceship. If you do too, drop an alien head emoji in the comments or tell me what you think it looks like. I'll call it a spaceship. But the point is, the menu looks very different than this. And what we need is this little piece right here. It's gonna open up an entirely different menu. Now let's talk about what that menu looks like and how we get there. You can see that I am clicked on this bigger of these two circles. When I click on it, everything else becomes grayed out. I can't edit any of that. Not even the smaller vector circle, not even the vector text we just made. I only can edit this here that's highlighted. You can see this blue path is the line, and then we have four commands. These are called nodes. Right now, no node is selected. If I highlight one, the entire menu comes up. If I don't have any highlighted, we only have two options, one of which is the scissors tool. So, I'm not going to go through all of this today. This right here is infinitely more valuable than most everything else inside of XCS because that can help you reduce the number of commands to your laser, meaning it will speed up processing, make cleaner cuts or engraves. I love this and most people don't use it. If you want a video on just that, let me know. But we're talking about the scissor tool. What the scissor tool does, it cuts the point between two nodes. Remember this line is called a path. So if we select the scissor tool and hover over a point between two nodes, we can remove that path. It's gone. So if I hit done to lock that in, here's our original circle. Here is our cut path circle. Now, why does this matter? If we highlight both of these, they're currently on score. If we change them to cut, they look exactly the same. However, if we change them to engrave, they look very different because in the engraving processing, it has to close this path. And because you took away the point, it will close the path the most efficient way it knows possible. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this in just a second. Let's talk about our first way we can use the scissor tool. This is text that I have welded together and converted to a path just like we did in the previous text example. If I come in here to the edit menu, I will be able to create what are called tabs. 
So inside of XCS, if we change this to cut, we actually have this ability here to generate tabs. However, I don't want tabs every you know particular distance. I just want a single tab so these two pieces don't fall out the center. How do I do that? I come into my edit menu and I look. Right now on the E, I can simply use the scissor tool to cut that path. And what we'll say, what the machine will do is it'll say, okay, cut all of this and cut all of this, but leave this untouched. That gives me a tab. But what if you only want a tiny tab over here on this O? You want most of it out. So instead, go to your select tool, which is the arrow, add a node, use the scissor tool to then take out just that tiny part. So to add a node, you just have to be highlighted on the path. And then once you have these two points, you can cut. Instead of having this massive tab, you can have just a little one. This is a very valid use case for when we change this to cut. If I want these pieces in my device, or if I want these pieces connected, this is how we do that quickly and easily. Use this a lot if you're adding um, stencil fonts or bridges into the stencil fonts. The second way is probably the number one way I use this. So this is a washer. And let's say my washer cut out and I got a little bit of a glue pocket just right up here. So I can come into the edit menu. Now a lot of times people will say, well, I'll just delete all the other nodes and then it'll be fine. But it's not because the system is automatically closing the paths for these two concentric circles, right? There's one here and one on the outer. But if we go into the scissors tool and say, nope, I want every one of these deleted, you can see now we have correctly reduced the number of nodes and the commands between those nodes, which are the paths. But remember, we only have just a little bit up here. So again, we add a node and we take that away, lock the change in, and now we can reprocess our material without moving anything and knowing there's a snag. That's probably the number one way I use it. Now the use case three is the combination of anything that is overlapping and you don't want to lose detail. So I've created a rounded frame here. I think it's four by six and I've created text. The first thing I'm gonna weld that text together. Let's not convert it. You can do this both ways. I am, however, going to make a copy. So what most people run into is they say, oh, well, I want to copy or I want to cut all of this as one piece. But when they unite it, which is the first step, they're losing all the detail underneath. So you've told it to combine that entirely, right? You've said unite these two pieces entirely. That is the first step. So let's unite them entirely change that to cut. Now this one, we want to score all of the bottoms of the letters. Now you may ask why you don't just copy this word, put it directly on top and make a score directly on top of your cut. The problem is sometimes that cut won't line up exactly and it could be do done with curve, it could be the power settings, it could be a ton of uh, reasons, but if you know that you need to get it right without a whole bunch of testing, I'm going to show you how to do that. So again, we did this first one exactly correct. You have to have the original or the copy that is combined. However, on the second one, you only need the bottom where these two pieces are crossing. So you only want like the bottom of the Y, the bottom of the T and the L, the A and the S. To get that right below Unite is called United Overlap. So again, you just want where those are crossing and it's gonna give you a teeny tiny piece of gook. Well, this one's gonna be score. Let's change it to purple. We need to put the gook up here and align it. Now you can zoom in up to 10,000 on XCS. So use your zoom and then manually place it. Just so that you know, you may have to come into your um, software menu, go down to settings, and turn off this auto snapping. 
I use Command R to turn it off, but if it's checked, you want to turn it off when you're really getting in close and trying to align things because you don't want it snapping into place anywhere for you during this. Okay, so let's say that that's lined up. Now, if I click off of this, currently it's saying cut everything in red, including these tops of the letters, and score everything in purple, including this line between here. We don't want that. We know that score and cut can both have open paths without any consequence. So let's cl click on the score, go to edit, and take the scissors tool to remove all of these. Now I do want to hold down space. I'm going to drag over and then I'm going to take those out as well. So now you can see it's going to cut up until here and then score. It's actually going to score first, but you would cut and then see your score perfectly aligned, giving the illusion that this name travels all the way down. You do want to uh, highlight both and hit group. Now, when I say that in other videos, people are like, I can't set the settings because they're grouped together. That's why we use the colors. You can come in here and just set your settings for score. Let's say we want to do 65 and 125 and then to cut your or set your settings for cut, you would come in here and do 95 and 6 or whatever it is. That way, these always travel together and you don't have to ever realign them or get them um, out of alignment while still being able to set your settings. So those three use cases are probably the top three that I use them for. I'd love to hear what you have used it for down below, or if you found this helpful, let me know that down below as well. I appreciate you being here. Please like the video and subscribe for more laser tips.